Copenhagen Wolves and the Unicorns of Love first. Look at the it lineup. really is how, where the junglers can be and how well hidden they can keep themselves. Yeah, and this is the natural progression, oh. but Hila Sung. Yeah, he goes in on Freeze with Kikis and Vardax there. Freeze exhaust is on. A couple of flashes burnt. Ooh. Phosphorus bomb, not enough damage. Keep eating the biscuit. Can't fast enough. That is going to be first blood over to Kikis. Seen very much for a while. Now in the bottom lane, Shen comes. Kaz, Vardax, chasing it back. Shook is there. Shen already had come in. The teleport now. And in comes Shook out of the brushes. Freezes there. Throws the big barrel out. Rolls it as well. And that's going to be Vardax going down. Visit Chachi might not have been wanting to teleport in there. And the wave clear in the Copenhagen Wolves' side. Billy's going in. Here we go. Got the Shen coming in on the target out. Sword. He's going to get blown up. Power of Evil gets the kill credit as Vardax valks away. In comes Lenny, and the fight is on. Looking for the tower, juggling the aggro. Chachi tanking it up as much as he possibly can. Tower still stands, but maybe not for much longer. Without a mid laner there, Kikis goes in. Just a feint. The Brock of the Ludens go on to Lenny. Thumbs it's on. They get it. Chachi will get Lenny. They're still finishing off the tower. And individually, they can't deal with the split pushers and the push and the control anymore. So right now they're trying to combat that by grouping. They may be able to take this tower down, but there are a number of unicorns in the area. Chachi here looking for Kali. Hilly goes in, gets polymorphed immediately, and all of a sudden the wolves, smelling danger, are trying to bail out. But Soren, he's going to go down the Chaos Storm, not enough to take out Power of Evil in the solo. And meanwhile, Vardax is on the bottom, continuing to push this unabated. Lenny, Wild Gross himself, Kikis goes in. He's isolated from the team, the Glitterlands. That's going to be it wearing off now. The rest of the wolves are caught. Chachi gets Kaz. Shook, he's going to go down too. Vardax is still pushing this one. The wolves are losing everything here. This is 4v5 by the Unicorns because Soren, he got lost in rotation. He got caught in the jungle right there. And once that main damage is gone, wolves are on the back foot. And look at the bottom lane. This is the early to mid game power spike AD carry. Right, we talked about how Soren had not been necessarily up to his former self, but still had the potential to carry in the past. Let's see, they continue shutting it down as Kikis is caught. In comes the Shen. Ooh, Bimbo! Bimbo! That got caught instead! Power of Evil, a double kill for him. They're caught in the storm of chaos, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, spring split, Unicorn dust back on them, finally working in their favor. However, if tradition proves right, today they play well and controlled. Tomorrow might be different. Let's see if Lenny can get any work done. Cast, they found Kikis right now, but will they be able to take him down? Knocked in, Chachi goes Soren. in, flash on. Soren, not quite down yet. Soren gets the kill onto Kikis. He much needed gold going into his pocket there, but the Unicorns aren't done yet. Lenny has to burn the flash to avoid Chachi. Shen looking to chase them on. Here's Vardex on the left. Yeah, cool stealthy stay, he says, on. okay, we're playing all in in the early game. Because we have this low range uh, Graves in the AD carry role. We have this very low mobility, medium range mage in the mid lane, but these are not picks that do well into poke. As we see right here, Kaz, he has the oh, face check and he's gone. No. They slice off a bit of cheese, hovering around mid, because he's a power people might get hard engaged on here. Or Shook might be the one. Kick is going to immediately flash mid barrel, and that is going to be the rest of the unicorns mobilizing to take go. him down. Shook is popped by Vardags. And now they're able to get even more off this. Let's see. Straight to the Baron. No more smite on the side of Wolves. Complete darkness. Oh, darkness, my friend. We meet again. Or the Copenhagen Wolves. They do, drink it. We use the blue orb to spot them out, but doesn't really reveal too much information, right? Because obviously, Unicorns are doing Baron. Yeah, they turn their attention now over to Kass, who's going to be getting away. The Baron still being fired Ooh, down. Victor. There's the Chaos Storm. They got to go in for this one. Kass looks for Vardex. He's burning low. Kass now, he is absolutely massive, courtesy of the Lulu. Hillisang's going to get taken down by Soren. And now the Wolves might have been able to finish this fight off. The Kogma has some serious damage, but Chachi is going to be the one who takes down Soren. A one for one. Kick us around the side. Shook his back up, however, let's see if we get back into the fight. It might be a little bit too late. In comes the Stand United. Down goes the Nautilus. Down goes the get away. In comes Lenny all by himself, and he's collapsed on by a blessing of unicorns. No Carl to help Lenny, and he goes down. They look more interested in taking out this inhibitor. No wolves there to stop him. They back away from it. It goes down. Inhibitor's bare. Time seems to be running out for the Copenhagen Wolves right now. Kass is going in to try and make the hero play. Gets the knockup, gets the second knockup with the wild growth. Look for Chachi, baits out Kass. They take him down, they're just too big. The Unicorns in his jungle when his lanes were all pushed in. So he was locked down, he had one opening. One shot, one opportunity, and he took it. All Unicorns might celebrate with some spaghetti later, but still have to close out this game. Yep. 
still have a little bit of time on the board to do that, but the Wolves are running around scared, trying to save themselves, but Soren will be the first to fall. Cass may be the second, he is. Nexus turrets aren't gonna live for much longer at this rate, all the way back to the towers and freezes, nearly taken down. Hillisang bowls the rest of them back in. Too many minions, too much pressure, and in the end, it's GG to the Unicorns of Love game as you saw Steve there rocket and they're going up against elements today destiny's available Dexter sneaking in looking for Steve there it goes they're going to turn their attention onto him Froggen comes around the back they will take him down three-man stack while rocket was trying to do right now yeah he's going in very very early level two see if he can find some damage onto Rales staying just out of range of the vision tabs sniff they're gonna get the ignite off onto Vander but tabs might melt before this is all over Dexter turns his attention to the enemy there's first blood they will be able to take it Maybe not a Hail Mary, but a couple of points. Major in the late game, so what you do is you counter gang. This might work out very well for Waka. Sensky in the depth charge. In comes the Evelyn. Agony's embrace. Yankos is too late to the party, however. Might be able to finish off Dexter with a bat, but not quite enough. Chased away by Jay Wow. And this honestly is poor communication coming out of Rocket, and I feel Steve should have flashed. You get into the game, the more, uh, you know, opposite it becomes. Steve is very squishy with high damage. I'll finish the story later. Looks like we're going to see the Destiny Gate coming in. Yanko's immediately preemptively flashing. And with the Ghost on, they catch him. Boomerang, Dexter is able to take him down as JWoww looks around the side for more. Dexter lanterns his way back to safety. Maybe not. And Shut in down. came Steve for the shutdown. Gold back in his pocket. JWoww being chased out by Nuke Duck. And Rales now sends out the Riptide. Won't be enough as Nuke Duck takes him to the skies and takes him back to Fountain. Yep, JWoww. We'll have to back off, play safe under the tower with a whole horde of minions there. Steve is going to keep throwing out a couple of cues here and there. Shield used. There you go, Parallel Convergence is on. In comes Yankos. He's going to get stunned up. Rune Prisoned as well, so he can't get out of it. Two-man tower dive successful. Steve tanking the tower, but he gets another two and two now on the rise. Now looking to siege tier two here. A lot of Rocket members. Elements only have JWoww and Nif, but they're looking for Dexter to go for the flank. But Nif is already down. Collateral damage. Dexter turns right around. Our ulti out. Falcon will probably use his Destiny very, very soon. He's able to take that one tower, but the Baron is there we go. by Rocket. A lot of damage. Destiny thrown down for the Global Vision. Baron at half its health. Yanko's tanking him all Jay up. going to flash over. Going in. Nif goes forward too fast. He gets popped. In comes Tabs. The Bear is down. Yanko's is going to get popped, however. Two members of Rocket already taken down. Steve, Steve, he's taken out for a double kill now as Elements all of a sudden turn their attention to finishing off the Baron and get it. And we saw that hook from Nif on Echo. That's the one target you don't want to go on unless you can chain CC him. Because if you give him one opportunity to use his corner break back to his ghost, Hang on, Steve is chasing Dexter here. Looking for it, Yanko's going in onto Dexter. Hate Spikes flank, flashes the parallel convergence. Running away as fast as he can. Two. The rest of them are there, and Rales collaterals him down. He's back up, but he's had a Watch long -Wow. away from Fountain. JWoww sends out the Riptide, gets stunned up. He's still got some AoE damage, just trying to buy some time for Dexter to arrive. Nif is going to get the hook off onto Nuke Duck. Baron is helping him out, but it's taken down by Rocket. And Element suddenly have to bail out, or do they? Going back in, looking Ooh. for Nuke Dog. Hook is flashed on the hunt. They were chasing him down, but didn't have enough. Dexter took way too long on that one. Yeah, his team wasn't in position. Really, the flash from JWoww is what, what sealed the deal at the Dragon fight, or the Baron fight, rather, because you want JWoww to flash it, draw the attention. Then Dexter wants to come in. We said this earlier. Secondary engage. Looking for Yankos. Destiny is on. Can they catch him? Parallel Convergence. Hook is going to catch Yankos. Will he be able to go in? He's going to Chrono Break, but still fall. Froggen had him with the card. Dexter moving in, Froggen as well. Tibbers oh, goes down, he missed it, no, there we go. Oh, no, no, that was, the, that was the reverse Messiah where he ulties in and usually what people do. Rocket are all in the middle here. Elements are just gonna start this one off. This will prop the instantaneous response. Teleport coming out from Steve. Can they stop this one? Shock Blast hits Nif. They bail out immediately. In comes Yankos. Chrono breaks back into Jay Wow. Separated from his team. Forced to flash. Followed up on. Taken down and blown up. One to none. Miscommunication. Rocket sending Jan Yankos, but he can obviously color break backwards. Elements sending Jay Wow, and he's stuck. And now on the hunt, have to be burned again by Tabs as it just came off cooldown. The Thresh Express getting elements, the rest of them out of danger, but they can't afford to leave here. Yeah, and uh, Rockat getting the fruits of that labor right here. The split push initiated by Steve forced elements to do this. They wanted Steve to teleport. Next turn. 
Looking for the flank. Alive with flash. Hook. Hook up Gonzalez. It won't go in on him though. Dexter goes in. He gets stunned up for just a second or rooted up, I should say. Steve gets Ooh, taken tabs. down by Tabs the crit. The double kill. Vander goes forward for the bear, but it won't be enough. Triple kill. A triple. Tabs is going for more. Froggen's coming in. Gets the gold card. Takes him down. Steals away the quadra, but elements don't care. They're on to push him in. What looked like miscommunication turned her out with Honestly, bravado from Tabs coming out. Man mode's at the front of the fight, you know, has that QSS, has that spell shield. And just the AoE bouncing blades there from Tabs, from that ricochet. And then as he gets stunned, he launches out his boomerang blade. It was so beautiful because even if you're stunned, it'll still come back to you. And Elements. Finally, Tabs is stepping up to the carry that he was renowned to be, and that was a fantastic fight. Off the back of it, back to form. Nexus Tower number one falling. Nexus Tower number two. The death timer's too long. Elements have done it. They topple Rocket and move up the standings. Origin and Giants are the coaches for the Unicorns of Love and Rocket. Now, and a TP from Soas. There is one more if they need it. Mithy's flashed in for this one. Audrey's got the eye of the storm, and here comes Soas from behind. Mithy is going to get exploded as he tries to pull himself to the wall. Godfred and Whirlip, they decide to turn back aggressively. Oh, three versus two. Oh, so Giants faded. are in trouble. The fat man's been rooted. With the equalizer in place, Frederick will get some damage, but it will not be enough. Soez is being burned down. Amazing gets a knock up on Willems, trying to get Soez. He's flashed for it, but will not get the kill. It becomes so difficult because Origin can just keep setting up dives and, and quick rotations with this uh, Sivir as well. This time around, Frederick's nearby. Amazing and Soez look to engage. Equalizer comes out and Frederick knocks Amazing under the tower. Whirlip overheats and sinks Amazing for a reply kill. Audrey, he's actually rocket jumped forward. Niels is the one that's been exhausted and Audrey forced to flash defensively. Niels now flashes aggressively. Auto attack after auto attack. Summoner heal comes down. Mithy goes in. He manages to get the mines out, but the boomerang secures the kill. Here comes the teleport. Peppy's come in from the middle lane. He's looking for Niels. He will not find him. Second Take one. teleport. Whirlip wants to play. A new challenger arises and he and is not dead. successful. Giants, your teleports are so awesome. Uncoordinated, Pippa Nero. Origin, Whirlip, he's gonna get dove. Yeah, we mentioned this earlier how Origin can just dive around, they're gonna get him. He's down, this, too easy. This is what we talked about, how if you start falling behind against comms with like Sivir and Nautilus and so on, it's so easy to set up these tower dives and these fast pushes with the Sivir and then have the Nautilus just go in first. Land the CC, Origin. And all of that's enabled by Niels, who, just as an update, between 10 and 20 minutes actually has the highest amount of kills out of anybody. Pekka is going to be in trouble here. Going to get three manned by Giants. Pepe started the TP, but I believe cancelled it. Pekka is going to flash away defensively. Giants have lost themselves up. They're split. Audrey is down. Pekka, Luna Rush, and the Crescent Strike. Pepe Nero wants to come in from behind, but pekka has got two. Soez is now going to look for Frederick and Godfrey. Soez is going to get caught out, but again, 3v1, and Origin are now going to surround Giants. Giants are just scattering to the wind. Dredge line connects. Frederick's knocked up and kneels. Hook, Lion, Sinker for one more. You can see the Baron stats slightly in favor of Argent, albeit being a little later for their first Baron. And as if on cue, Vision Control rests with the blue team. Pepe Nero is very far away. An early equalizer once more from Whirlib. No El Bandito steal today. Frederick body slams over. Whirlip will get taken out by Niels as a flash from Soaz will be setting up another kill. Three members of Giants down and Pepe Nero is running for his life. Windwall comes out. You've got damage, but not enough, my friend. Baron and four down. Origin looking at the base. And with this Baron buff, with this spit push, Diana, we mentioned her time and time again, the skirmishes. Origin can also just dive if they want to. There's the threat at least, which is enough to force Giants to, to back. Oi, away. you mean Peke? Like he dived Whirlip? Totally dropped him. Peke still has Hourglass available. Gonna look for Audrey. He's gonna flash forward. Pale Cascade doesn't connect. Audrey forced to defensively flash. While all of that's going on, Origin have got the inhibitor turret. They've also got Frederick. El Bandito's down. Pepe's got Niels, but he may not be able to get the kill because the spell shield and the auto attacks keep Niels alive. While all that was going on, Peke got his second solo kill under the turret of the bottom lane. Origin, five against one. Now knocking on the Nexus turrets. 
17 to 3, 28 minutes. The conga line of minions move their way in. Origin are looking for their 10th victory of the summer split. And they obliterate giants. Welcome back to the European League Championship Series and H2K are about to take to the rift against the undefeated Fnatic and joining me... ...will spot all of Fnatic. How do H2K respond? So remember H2K was just waiting in a bush. Fnatic doesn't know where they are. They might walk straight into them. Let's see how many members are around. Only Janen and then Ryu on the other side. We might see a collapse on Rainover. Look at him. He's taunted. Rainover's in trouble. He gives up first blood to Odu on this knob. Might not be over yet. Mooney's trying to escape. Kissing saving up the energy. Yellow Star put a point into Pulverize. Lulex has flashed over the wall. Yellow Star in trouble. Taunt not going to be needed or used. Two to zero. H2K's ward works out beautifully. Get his own level six and. As we mentioned before, it's about tracking this Rengar. Look at his early side stone for him. Didn't upgrade his uh, enchant. Instead, Rainover, he's going for Odomnir now. Gonna look for the harp. Odomnir knows, gets rooted in place. Equalizer's burning Odomnir. The follow-up Bola. Shen's coming. Ignite. It's coming out from Kasing. He has an Ignite. That's a two-man taunt. Flash away from Rainover. H2K have got three kills. Kasing and Odomnir want more. Mega Nars about to come out. Odomnir needs one more auto attack. He's saving it. The taunt connects. Mega Nars gonna pop. Huni's in trouble. He gets Narbard against the wall. 4-0 H2K. We talked about this. Support Shen is so... ...into the jungle here. They force Reckless and Gilda away from the tower. Yeah, Fnatic, they're trying to go in again. And they pull something off. That's a flash pulverized. Kasing and Lulex kept out. Lulex is knocked back. He will go down to Rainover, who's now on the board. Fnatic with their first kill. Equalizer in the tri bush. Shock Blast connects. The 4v4, because they want again. They want a split push with Odo Amne. Jumping him now. Hooney's already gone good. golden and he's got caught out. Hooney will be dropping, but not before he puts the equalizer out. Rainover's leaped back in with Thrill of the Hunt. Kasing is channeling the Stand United. Rainover's looking for a kill, but I don't think he'll find him. Kasing saves H2K once more. Look at the front lane as well. Soloed by Oda Wamne, and Hyanen is pushing the bottom lane. Fnatic get a tower at the cost of three lives. Big enough poke from this Jace, from this Corky. We haven't seen them get into proper fights yet. They might be able to get a pick on Lulek, though. Lulex is in trouble. Explosive cast comes out. Equalizer's down. Odo Omni is back in Mega Nar. He's going to look for a two-man knockout, but it's only Rain over in Yellow Star. Feathervin is firing down the shock blast on the side as Yarn has been zoned away thus far. Kissing lands a taunt. Look at Reckless. He's low on mana, but high on health. Landing auto attacks, flashing forward. The Gatling gun's out. He should find Odo Omni for the shutdown. Oh, the nice. shock blast. Finds Yarnit! Fnatic have four kills looking for the ace, and there's a peel for Baron. I'm happy we just talked about how strong the mid game is for Fnatic, yet, even though we didn't get to see them really use it so far, now they got a fight. Lulex got caught out. Sweeting it out. Never disrespect the damage Fnatic can do at this point. The game Yellow Star is torn it up. Let's see what Lulex can do. Equalizer comes out. That one's good. The shock blast doesn't connect. Fnatic have got the damage focus on Odu Wamne and Lulex. Odu Wamne will be going down. Feathervin's on a killing spree. Five versus four, and Fnatic cannot find more. Again, it's Fnatic going in. I'm not sure if I said never respect the damage or never disrespect the damage, but don't disrespect it because Fnatic's mid game is fantastic. Ryu is here, he's full HP, but Lulex is so low, he's going in! Kaling's coming over from the side, Red Team Baron! Fnatic get Baron! There's two more kills for Huni, it's a double, they're looking for Ryu! We see the Valkyrie available from Reckless, Shock Blast connects! Rainova doesn't connect with the Bowler Strike, nor does the Foss Bomb! And that Death Star laser hurts a lot! Ryu's gonna be able to get out, but Fnatic! Really defend yourself, you cannot set up sieges, now they can. Kasing is gonna flash forward though, taunt forward. Same thing. Do you see the Valkyrie away from Reckless? He's trying to be zoned out. Yellow Star's on the front line. Huni's overheating, so there's no equalizer, but they've killed Kasing. There's the Chaos Storm as the gravity field stuns up a few members of Fnatic. Fnatic are grouped. Reckless is chunked low. The Shen Torn instead you want Reckless, or maybe Huni could take him down before the hourglass. But Fnatic now, because they've been landing so much hope, they know HK have been forced to back away, and they just start 
the Baron now. Culling comes up from Kian and he's a little split from his team. HDK in position. Baron number two secured. Equalizer comes out and Odo One is down already. Lulex is looking for Feathervin, but he's not going to find him. Rain over leaps in. We see a flash for flash. Yellowstar chasing Kasing. Three members of H2K are down. Fnatic have a Baron. Yellowstar setting up yet another kill for Fnatic and Rainover. He's bounced back from a horrid start. And Fnatic will have an uncontested inhibitor turret for at least 25 seconds. And just great play all around from Fnatic and setting up this Baron. How they're just dancing around it. They wait for H2K to move close, then they land the poke. And once H2K is forced back to their own base, well, then you just start rushing in this Baron here for Fnatic. I mean, if you can't even beat them when you get two kills at level one, who's going to stop Fnatic? Two kills at level one for H2K. 7-1 later on in the game, and yet here we are. So if this Stand United comes in, it will be low. Culling used to try and clear this wave. Reckless is getting a few or two attacks down. Yarnin is going to dash forward aggressively. Oduwamne is going to go Meganar. Does not have Flash available. Will get Hyper in a moment. He's going to try stun up Huni. We see Rainover is splitting up H2K's focus. And Oduwamne is down. Lulex follows quickly thereafter. And Fnatic find a third. That's a double kill for Reckless as Huni goes for another. Four members of H2K are down. The Supers are into the base. In the European LCS, every team fights one another, but it's Fnatic that end up winning. 13 and zero. They equal the longest winning streak in LCS history. Welcome back to the European LCS where SK and Gambit are setting up on stage as we speak for our last match. Whether or not Sven's early damage will be enough. This Sure as heck enough CC from Freddy. Not a lot of CS, but a lot of minions to farm. We did see Sven getting get oh, from the camp. Phase dive over. We are going to see the wind wall come out. That means the dredge line is blocked. And Cabo Shard continues to put the damage down onto Sven. Parallel Convergence will not find a stun. The big body barrel slam will. Cabo Shard dashes once, dashes twice, finds first blood, and gets himself a blue buff for a moment. Gets One a lock up onto Freddy. He's staying alive. Freddy should go down. One or two more hits. Freddy's going to dredge line to safety. We mentioned in Picks and Bands how if Sven was able to disrupt Gambit's chances, maybe he could work out. Gonna look for an engage. Parallel Convergence. This oh, might nice be a stun. stun. And it catches Betsy out. The Chaos Storm will burn Betsy down. And he didn't. He saved until after when he'd already been poked down so low. That was a mistake for him. Diamond, though, he's gonna go in for the gang. And oh! Three minutes! Oh, Set up! The last breath! Depth charge. Look at the rest of the team though. Everybody's converging. Forgiven is not. Yes, Vince Gerns got knocked up and goes through Pepper. He's gonna get stunned by the parallel convergence. SK's in the retreat. Spence Gerns gets caught out. Gonna chrono break back, but it will not be enough. 2 0 2 Cabochard. Simon was 1 0 2. He had 100% kill participation in 15 minutes. It's not something we've seen. Fox has picked the fight with Cabo or vice versa, and Fox is going to get dumpstered. Victor joining in now. It's five members from SK. They just used quite a lot of that. That's fine. No, oh, he's going to get it. Last breath. A double kill for Cabo Shard, and he wants more. He's going to keep sweeping that blade across. He's going to find himself another with the help of Gambit. Killing spree shut down by Fox, but it does not matter. An ace for one. And this time he even set it up himself. By the time playoffs rolls yeah, around. That's when he laughs at all the people. Cabo wants more. Cabo should get more dredge line away. Cabo's gonna oh, no, keep something. No. A new okay. challenger appears and Fox shuts him down. That could determine head to head. We'll expand on they're this. They're gonna have to stop this Baron then, Trevor, if they want to have a chance of winning this game. I don't think they're going to be able to. They're not. Baron has been secured. Cabo shots found Sven Skeren. The chrono break will buy some time, but forgiven as well as Cabo shot. Will double team Spen as Arcane shifted forward. Cabochard is pushing the top. Gambit will keep playing interference. And Freddy, he's gone way deep. Once again, Freddy with a questionable decision, connecting the dredge line. And Cabochard's got the flanking opportunity. The thing is, SK just have no damage. They're falling behind, already had a composition with very low damage overall outside of the Victor pick. And then once you start falling behind, it looks even worse. I mean, yeah, Cabochard wasn't even there. Now, Gambit are looking to close out the game. SK are split up. They've already lost their big tank top laner. Gambit are looking at the Nexus. They will undoubtedly pick up their sixth victory in the summer split. 
and are looking to be a real threat as we get closer to the end of the regular season. Cabochard wants more and he gets more.